Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim, fill that out and that's it. I always like to start with something interesting. And if you're in the market for a VR headset, do not, that's right, do not buy the Oculus Quest 2 right now. Why? Because just in time for the holidays, Meta, the company formerly known as Facebook, but still run by Mark Zuckerberg, they're coming out with a new VR headset that has eye and facial tracking and a higher res screen. And it's going to be a lot more expensive than the Quest 2, which recently got its price bumped. It's not cheap anymore. It's like 400 bucks. The new VR headset is going to be announced on October 11th. And on that happy note, welcome to the nation's largest show about all things digital. I have to tell you, boy, when I started on this career over 20 years, years ago. I never knew it would be so big and so long, but here, VR. Get it? VR. Oh, I know. That was really bad. And of course, I'm Kim Commando, and this is Kim Commando today because tech never stops. And just a quick reminder, if you're too shy and you don't want to be on a radio show or a podcast, you can always send me your questions. Just head over to commando.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, there's a link that says email Kim, and that's where that magic happens. All right. I scour the news headlines and the websites and press releases, and I talk to all of my insider friends to give you right now five Five things that you need to know about tech. And all of America should have access to fast broadband service. It's that simple. I mean, everybody needs to be on the internet. But wait until you learn how much the Biden administration has wasted to bring it to just 31,000 people in rural communities. Now, I'm not saying if you live in a rural community that you shouldn't have internet access. I'm just saying that there are better options. Like, for example, Elon Musk's fleet of Starlink satellites covers the entire planet, if not now, it will, wirelessly with high-speed internet access. You just head over to Starlink.com and you can see if it's available in your area. I just put it into my home. It's fabulous. So easy. It took like five minutes just to set it up. But anyway, Congress through the FCC gave Musk, get this, $900 million to guarantee Starlink coverage for 31,000 rural Americans. But the Biden administration, apparently they didn't know about this $900 million. They are spending another $400 million to bring wired internet service to the same people in the same areas. Why are we laying cables and fibers down to rural America? Why are we doing this? They just can't get their internet access off the satellite. That's $1.3 billion to bring redundant service to just 31,000 people, which works out to $42,000 per person. <laughs> our tax dollars at work, my friends, our tax dollars at work. All right, number two on our list is Guess who the top car maker is? Guess who the top auto manufacturer is right now? Just say it out loud. Write it down. What do you think it is? What is the name of that auto manufacturer? Uh, you're wrong. That's right. Every year about this time, a company called Strategic Vision, they conduct a survey of new car owners. It asks how satisfied they are with their new purchase and which car they would buy if they had the chance. Well, the big surprise is this. 26% of new car owners say that they're ready right now, sight unseen, to buy a car that does not exist. That car is going to be designed and manufactured by Apple. And of course, you know, we've been hearing about this Apple car for years. But in that same survey, new car owners are also asked about their impression of the quality of that new vehicle. The car that consumers say would be the highest quality, once again, is Apple's car. But it doesn't exist. It hasn't been built. Okay, my money is that the Apple car is on the way soon. Oh, but did you hear that Apple actually came up with a revolutionary new eye patch for pirates? Did you hear about this? It's called the II patch. You get it like I, oh, I know. If you have to explain, it, it's not that funny. All right, number three. Everybody who uses a rideshare service needs to listen up to this because we're all familiar with dash cams. They're invaluable to prove your innocence after an accident. They are front-facing dash cams that do inside and outside the car. But if you're ever using an Uber or Lyft, these cams are really an absolute must. And I always comment to a rideshare driver when they have a dash cam like that is so smart. Because you should never get into a rideshare, including an Uber and Lyft, and actually you see a dash cam, because here's why. 
Last week, 18 Lyft passengers and drivers, both men and women, they filed lawsuits against Lyft after having been physically or sexually assaulted using the Lyft app. Now, the lawsuits demand that Lyft provide the dash cams to monitor both inside and outside the car to protect the drivers and also the passengers. Now, the suit claims that Lyft already knew the dangers that drivers face and simply don't want to spend the money to install the cameras or give them out. Now, of course, anytime there's a camera around, people just act a little differently, don't they? They they maybe are more respectful. They're nicer. So remember, if the Uber or Lyft you've called doesn't have a camera recording inside and outside the car, don't get in. Or better yet, use the one that you have. Turn on your phone's video and you can record the entire ride. And you can always tell the driver, hey, listen, I just want to let you know I'm recording you. Uh, number four on our list, also coming out of Apple News, is the $2 million bet. I don't know if you heard about this, but Apple has offered up a global $2 million wager. The company is in essence saying, we bet $2 million that no one, no researcher and no government can break through the iPhone's new lockdown mode. Now, here's what you need to know. Lockdown mode wasn't really developed for you or me. It's developed to protect high-profile users. I'm talking about politicians and judges, activists, against state-sponsored hackers. Now, it does all of this by turning off most preview features in iMessage and also the other apps. But it also does a lot more. It blocks all wired connections. It will stop the phone's data from being copied. It also prevents new configuration files from being installed. It's going to shut down FaceTime. It's also going to shut down all the software updates. Now, you don't have to be a high-profile user to get lockdown mode. Apple says they're going to release it to everyone who uses an iPhone, and it's coming this fall, and they're not going to charge anything for it. Again, it's lockdown mode, absolutely free. And finally, this last item. Fitbit helps convict a husband of murder. Now, this past week in Vernon, Connecticut, a Fitbit exercise tracker helped convict a murderer and sentence him to 65 years in jail. But the trial wasn't really about the Fitbit. The guy's name is Richard DeBate, and he was two-timing his wife Connie. And apparently he was in love with another woman, and she was carrying his child, and Connie knew absolutely none of this was going on. On December 23rd in 2015, Richard went to work, but he claimed that he forgot his laptop and he had to return home to go get the laptop. There, he says, he saw an intruder and heard, oh my gosh, two gunshots that killed his loving wife, Connie. Now, Richard said an intruder tied him to a chair and then slashed him with a box cutter. But the star witness, Connie's Fitbit, his wife's Fitbit, showed that she was leisurely just walking at home, just working around the house, a full hour after Richard claimed that she was killed by that intruder. Well, Richard's attorney said that the Fitbit that Connie was wearing at the time of the murder was malfunctioning. It just did not work properly. The time was a complete hour off. Well, luckily, no one bought that garbage. Richard was thrown in jail thanks to the tech on his wife's wrist. And now he's going to be sitting in jail, hopefully, for 65 years. All right, coming up uh, here on Kim Commando Today, we have the best resources to buy and sell old coins, and it's not eBay. Have some safety tech for any kids that are going back to school. We're going to be talking about search engine comparisons, uh, Google versus Start Page versus DuckDuckGo versus Bing. We have the best browser for your phone, and then later on, how you can trade in your old, not working gadgets and get some cash. And of course, you have me here on Kim Commando Today. How'd you like to hear about how I saved $456 in just five minutes? I used an app called Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Can you remember all the free trials and all the other random subscriptions that you've signed up for? Of course you don't, and that's what they're banking on. I love that with Rocket Money, I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. Then if I see something I don't want, I just tap to cancel, and I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Rocket Money has over 5 million users, and it has helped save its members an average of $720 a year, with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. 
Stop wasting money on things that you just don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Kim. That's rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Rocketmoney.com slash Kim. If you have not already claimed your free Windows or Mac guide, do it right now while you're thinking about it. Head over to commando.com slash free guides. Once again, that's commando.com slash free guides. All right. How about we start with Debbie? Hello there, Debbie. Thank you, Kim. Um, well, I um, I have to admit, I never heard of you or your show until I saw the article in the uh, AARP magazine. And oh, I my was... gosh. Where have you been? <laughs> where have you been? <laughs> Under a rock, evidently. <laughs> Come um, on. <laughs> well, I, I saw the thing about um, pill containers that can remind you if the medication has been taken. And yes. my, my mom has a hard time taking her medication. Even if we're on the phone with her and, and ask her to take it, she'll say, yeah, and she still won't do it. Um, I wondered if there okay. was some kind of container that would notify, like, me or my sister that, hey, she didn't take her medication today. So let me ask some questions about your mom. How old is your mom? 85. Okay. And then does she live alone? No, she actually lives with her husband. Um, They've been married almost uh, 67 years, actually tomorrow. Oh, that's fabulous. That's yeah. cool. Congratulations. That's great. Um, well, here, here's the reason. Here's the reason why I ask. Um, is I was my mother's caregiver for my mother actually lived with me for ooh, thirty years, wow. a little bit more than that. And I, uh, my father passed away, and then she just came and lived with me, and we were obviously very close. And then, long story short, is that she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and I don't want to go into all that. But um, when I was taking care of her, and she lived in the guest house in, on my property, so it was really a fabulous situation. Um, but I want to tell you about something, and then we'll talk about the pills, okay? Okay. Is that, have, is that I'm sure you know that Amazon has this thing called an Echo, right? Yes. You know what they are? Yes. Okay. So they have an Amazon Echo show, and that's the video screen. Um, they, this is a, a wonderful tool to help keep track of not only your mom, but also your dad. Mm-hmm. Because you could have an echo show, your sister could have an echo show, and they have an echo show, and the echo show is they're priced anywhere from like five hundred to two hundred dollars, or pardon me, fifty dollars to about two hundred dollars. And what I loved about it is that I could just say, "Drop in on mom," and then her video screen would come on. Okay. And there's no there's no phone calls. It just it, it gives it gives the it gives mom or dad ten seconds to say yes I'll accept it or no but then the screen comes on if they don't say anything the screen comes on and you could have a video call with them right there and say hey how you guys doing right okay um, it also it also has fall detection response so if it notif- if somebody has fallen uh, there's a circle of support so that you and your sister can pick times that you're going to check in. If something happens, they can say, call for help, and then they would call you or your sister. Okay. And it's it's just, it's this really wonderful tool. And I, I wish I could tell you three or different four products that actually did the same thing, but there, there aren't. That's the only one? So there are also, pardon me? I said it was, it's the only product out there? It's pretty much the only one that does what I just mentioned. Okay. And you can also set up you can also set up activity feeds, and so if the Echo Show doesn't notice anybody moving, bef- you know, after nine a.m., you would mm-hmm. get a notification. Okay. You could, uh, then they, they they can also use the Echo Show to have video calls. Speaker it will work as a speakerphone. Uh, they can watch the news. They can watch movies. They can get their music. They can do everything with this. It really is pretty amazing. So, um, just as a side note, there's also a way where you can say um, to manage their medication. Okay. And so you put in their medications, and then it will create reminders for them to take the medication. Okay. Now, if you don't think that's enough, where Alexa will come on and say, "Hey, listen, you know, mom, it's." nine o'clock, you need to take your meds, 
then there's something else called Live Fine, L-I-V-E, Fine. And it's a smart automatic pill dispenser. You put up to 28 days, you fill up. It's like the old school medi- medication organizer, you know, where you lift the tops up. Right. And you can have up to uh, nine poses a day, nine doses a day, rather. And But what it also has is as a caregiver is that it will give you notifications if that hasn't been opened that particular day. Sounds like that's something that would probably work for you. But I just wanted to tell you about the Amazon. It's called Alexa Together. I just want to tell you about that. Just if not now, maybe at some point that you might be looking for something a little bit more than that. So it's called the what I, the product that I'm mentioning is the Live Fine, L-I-V-E Fine, Smart Wi-Fi, Automatic Pill Dispenser, whatever. Um, what it'll do is we'll send you a link to it in your okay. email. So that this way you know exactly what I'm talking about because it's hard to find all this stuff on Amazon because they just sell everything. So anyway, so I'm going to um, go ahead and put that. And Debbie, where do you live? Um, I live in Wadsworth, Illinois. I'm halfway between Chicago and okay. Milwaukee. Okay. Well, we got affiliate stations in Milwaukee. We're on WS. I'm on WS in Chicago. Okay. Um, and so as a matter of fact, they so on WS in Chicago – they actually air an extra hour of the show. I do a special hour for them on Friday night, and then they carry the weekend show on Saturday and also on Sunday. So now I expect you to at least at least listen at least once. I mean, just oh, once, Debbie, just once. I will. All right. Thank you so much, Debbie. Thank you for your call. Thanks for finding me on, on the AARP. Yes, I was the cover girl on AARP's August-September issue. So if you uh, – you didn't throw away that issue, did you? No, you shouldn't because it's wonderful. It's all about tech. And again – I want to thank the good folks at AARP for putting me on that cover. And Debbie, thank you so much for your call. I appreciate you getting through. Hey, speaking of pills, I don't know if you know this, but CBS has something called Simple Dose. So if you take more than a few meds a day, they actually put them into packets and they name them like morning, afternoon, and nighttime. Pill Pack does the same thing. All right, Amazon bought them, so now it's Amazon Pharmacy. But the packets on Amazon can contain any of your supplements that you take as well. So maybe it's vitamins, fish oil, melatonin. And then every 30 days, Amazon is just going to send you your meds. Uh, no extra costs, and they actually take insurance too. All right, let's talk about the best resource to buy and sell your old coins. Because you have some laying around, they may be worth something. And even if you don't want to sell them, why not find out how much they're worth? There's a really wonderful site that helps you identify, buy, sell, and estimate the value of your coins. Now, I highly doubt that you have a 1933 double eagle that's worth almost $20 million. But coinscatalog.net is a great site to get a handle if your coins are worth anything. So coin prices on the site are generated according to market trends. They're updated all the time. And then you can search through available listings. You can see if your coin is on anyone's wish list. You can search for it by photo. There's swap options. Uh, Again, the site is coinscatalog.net. And if you miss that site name, just search the word coins over at my site. That's commando.com. All right, still to come, we've got some safety tech for kids that are going back to school. We're going to be talking about Google versus Start Page versus DuckDuckGo. And then we have the best browser for your phone. And then, of course, we have more of your fantastic phone calls here on Kim Commando today. Since our founding in 2000, we at the Center for Internet Security have always had one mission. It's to create confidence in the connected world for people, businesses, and governments. As a nonprofit, we do this by drawing upon our core competencies of collaboration and innovation. The world is changing, cyber threats are evolving, and IT resources are limited. All you want is a way to strengthen your cybersecurity programs efficiently and effectively. Let CIS help you with these efforts. We use a consensus-based process involving IT professionals from around the world to develop and maintain security best practices. These resources are proven to defend systems and data against threats, both on-premises and in the cloud. We also strive to help organizations of every size and maturity strengthen their cybersecurity programs. This includes serving U.S. state, local, tribal, and territorial government organizations. At CIS, we're all about making the connected world a safer place. Visit our website to learn more.
All right, as the kids go back to school, safety is paramount. It's on the top of minds in schools, top of parents' minds, and also schools. And here's a look at some tech for kids. I also wrote about this for my USA Today column recently. Now, a lot of schools don't let kids have cell phones in the classroom until they reach a certain age. But smartwatches are another thing. And they can actually be a better safety tool than cell phones because in the event of emergency, kids can tap a few buttons on a watch, which is more inconspicuous than making a phone call. I'll tell you, if I had a kid in school, I'd put a smartwatch on them, and I'd make them wear long sleeve shirts every single day. Uh, T-Mobile has something called the Sync Up Kids Watch, makes calls and texts, has real-time location tracking, and just one button to press to call for help or call 911. Now, if your kid already has a phone, you think they'd be able to use it, get the Life360 app. It offers location tracking and a way to ask for help without saying a word. And finally, Apple AirTags. They're great real-time location trackers. You can buy bands that hold one. You can drop one in your kid's backpack. And it really pains me to say this because it's just awful, but you need to have safety drills at home so your kids know what to do in the event they need to actually take care of a situation or handle a situation rather. All right, coming up in just a few moments, we're going to be talking about search engine comparisons, Google versus Startpage versus DuckDuckGo and Bing. Yes, some people still use Bing. And before we get to all that, hello there, Joe. Hey, hi, Kim. How are you? I'm fantastic. What's going on? So, Kim, we've, we've um, watched and listened to you for years, and you always seem to be ahead of the curve. I, I really, really admire that. That's terrific. Oh, well, thank you, Joe. Um, yeah, you're welcome. More than welcome. So if you call your uh, cell phone carrier and ask them how to handle um, robocalls or annoying calls or that sort of thing, one of the things they'll tell you is change your phone number. Okay. And that could be okay. But what I learned is that also is a vector for hackers. If they find right. your old phone number, and by the way, they're only good for or they're only unused for like 45 days, which I also didn't know, um, they can actually use that old phone number yes. um, and use it as a text sure. um, to actually um, get a hold of your one one or more of your accounts. Oh, yeah, because so, use it that yeah, cause so many of us give our cell phone number as the two-factor authentication, right? I mean, when you're signing up for right, just about exactly. anything. Or your social media yep. accounts may even require it. Exactly. So if you change your phone number, that old one's still hanging out there after 45 days if you're not aware of it. So one of the things that, um, um, and well, I recently did change my phone number, but one of the questions that I have, I have is, is there a way where you can actually figure out all of the places that have your uh, old phone number? Um, well, first of all, before you do this again, I want you to call me, okay? <laughs> Just don't be making these technical decisions by yourself, Joe, okay? You should be talking okay. to me, all right? I mean, I'm right here for you. Um, because what we, what you could do with the old phone number, if you, if you wanted to keep the old phone number, uh, just for security reasons, and maybe you don't want to miss any phone calls because you don't want to go tell everybody that you have a new phone number, is that you can fire up a Google Voice account, and then for 20 bucks, one-time fee, is that you can have that old phone number as a Google Voice app right on your phone, your new phone. And so then we wouldn't have to worry about all this. But you didn't do that. Shame on you. So <laughs> um, it's, it's really hard to know. Let me just tell you. I mean, you can go through okay. your phone and you can look through every app, right? And, you're, and think of the obvious ones. You, you know, your banking, uh, any type of e-wallets like Zelle or Venmo. Um, but I can't tell you if there's one spot that you can go see every single place that has your phone number, because that does not okay. exist. You have to go through your particular phone and start updating it. And it it's also brings up a really good point because maybe you have accounts out there that you're not using anymore. And mm -hmm. it's a good idea every once in a while to just start purging those. So you're not looking at, you're not carrying all this security weight with you. There's a website called justdelete.me, and you know that sometimes deleting accounts can get to be uh, a little cat and mouse or whack-a-mole type of thing because they don't want you to delete exactly. accounts, and they don't make it easy to delete your account. Is that what I love right. about this site is that they walk you through 
every place pretty much on the internet that says, okay, here's how you delete your account here. Here's how, and, the, and again, it's, uh, it's called justdelete.me. You have to be careful uh, because there are other sites that have popped up that kind of almost look like it. So just remember it's justdelete.me. Okay. That's so great. so does that answer your question? Yeah, I, I actually didn't have any problem. And one of the things I did do was tell, you know, I, I told everybody that needed to know that I did change my phone number. But, um, you know, you, you wonder if there's still something hanging out there that you're unaware of. There probably is. There probably is. <laughs> but, but I mean, right. I, I mean, it's just I'm just being honest. And so maybe what you also want to do is start changing, um, you know, uh, maybe some of your security questions. Uh, start looking at the accounts, make sure you do have two-factor authentication going to your current phone number or maybe a backup as your email address. It's, you mm -hmm. know, we're, we're in a bit of a, a nightmare right now as far as with computer security because we really don't have any. I mean, if you start really thinking about it, I mean, we just had, uh, you know, a 5,000 you know, pipeline that got hacked because of ransomware. And right. I mean, you're in Michigan, I'm in Arizona, we weren't really affected, but I mean, people were taking fists to each other, saying you cut in front of me. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, I mean, here we are. Is this really America? What's going on? But yeah, but, I think they said there's something like 15,000 stations were reporting that they were without fuel. Yeah, which is, which is, and it, it was taken out by hackers, right? Yeah. And so... <laughs> What, where, what's going on? Because if they can take that out, this is my concern. I talked about in the beginning of this hour. If they can take that out, what's preventing them from taking out the power grid? And think about everything that could go wrong, Joe, if they took out the power grid. No power, no internet, no cell phones, no fuel at the pumps, no banking. Yep. I mean, it, that's why I think it's really important. And my glass, and you know from listening to me, my glass is always half full. I'm like, yes, rainbows, ponies, and flowers. Everything is great. You know, even when it's not, I always say everything's great. <laughs> but this time I'm not, because I really believe that we as a nation are just totally unprepared for what could come down the pike. And so what that means is that you need to be prepared. You need to have your family prepared. And the, the government doesn't like to talk about this, but there's actually a website called ready.gov. Hmm. What do they tell you there? They tell you how to get ready in the case of not just a natural occurrence, a storm or anything like that, but what happens if you get hacked? What happens if you can't get to the bank for any money? Again, ready.gov. Joe, thank you so much for your call. Yeah, 12 words, right? It's, uh, we have been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. I don't know if you noticed, but they've actually been slowing down. The calls, 8 billion of them a year. Wow. We're actually coming from a Panama-based company owned by two characters, Roy Cox and Aaron Michael Jones. Now, initially, the calls couldn't be stopped because Panama is outside the FCC's jurisdiction. But the FCC found another way, and the commission ordered all telephone companies, whether wired or cellular, to immediately stop delivering those calls to your phone. It was creative legal maneuvering, but yeah, I'm so tired of that. The car's extended warranty. All right, let's do a great tip. And this week is brought to you by CarShield. All right, when we start talking about search engines, of course, Google is a no-brainer, has a 91% market share. It's the most popular search site, and you can find just what you're looking for. DuckDuckGo, they've been taking out a lot of ads about their privacy, and they say they have about 25 million users. StartPage is called the world's most private search site, and Bing, of course, is owned by Microsoft. And, well, it's so bad that Microsoft pays you in gift cards to use it. So let's talk about pros and cons. Okay. Of course, with the pros with Google is that it has incognito mode. Uh, so you can stop search terms from being stored in your profile. They have detailed settings. The con is that, well, they track everything that you do, and they don't hide your IP address when you browse. DuckDuckGo has a map that doesn't track your location, doesn't track your IP address or search history, uh, but it still shows you ads. The ads aren't personalized. Uh, start page, they don't log your personal information, hide your IP address completely. It offers anonymous view. And it could be kind of simple, though, for people who like more results. And Bing, they say they don't share enterprise data with Microsoft, but let me just tell you, it's not the best search site. So which one is the best one? 
Of course, Google will give you the most results. DuckDuckGo promises your privacy, but I have found the search results with DuckDuckGo not to be the best. Uh, so that's why if you're looking for a private-based search site, just give StartPage a shot. Once again, that's startpage.com, and I think you're really going to like it. All right, coming up, the best browser for your phone, how to trade in your old, even not working gadgets for cash. And of course, we have more of your phone calls here on Kim Commando today. Forget the pressure to be crushing your workout on day one. Just starting is what matters. Wherever you're beginning and wherever you want to be, start moving with Peloton Bike, Bike Plus, Tread, Row, Guide, or App. With thousands of classes and over 50 Peloton instructors ready to support you from day one. Remember, doing something is everything. Get started with a Peloton bike or Bike Plus rental at onepeloton.ca slash bike slash rentals. All access membership separate. Terms apply. All right, back to the phones we go with Ida. Hello there, Ida. Well, thank you, Kim. Do you know it's my birthday and you're my birthday gift? Oh, you're so <laughs> sweet. Well, happy birthday. You know, I would sing to you, but you really wouldn't want me to oh, do that because it would not be a happy. <laughs> I don't. Well, okay. Happy birthday to you, Ida. Happy birthday to yeah. you, Ida. Happy birthday. You're Ida. Happy birthday to you. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So how can I help you out? Well, I have two questions that I sort of gave advance notice about in my email, and I'm going to sneak in a third one. My first question okay. is, um, I tend to move around and change carriers, you know, like the cable and so forth. And I want to know about an ongoing email address where I wouldn't have to be switching it up all the time. Does that make sense? Well, if you got yourself a Gmail address, that would be accessible anywhere. Well. And so it's not tied, Gmail's not tied to any particular cable provider. You just, wherever you go, you just, I've had a Gmail address, oh gosh, I don't know, for over 20 years. And they don't do a lot of collecting information about me? Oh, you know they do. I know that's <laughs> Google. Of course they do, you silly that. girl. <laughs> Is that the only alternative? <laughs> there are. Well, there, yeah, it's it's, but it's free. Sure. Anytime it's free, you're the product, right? Exactly. I mean, so, so uh, there are other services like Hush Mail and Proton Mail, but you're going to have to pay for those. Oh yeah. Okay. How about is there a way for me to be my own email host? So you can be the fabulous Ida at Ida Fabulous Ida dot com, yeah. something like that. Really easy yeah. to do. Is that you're going to buy a domain name. It's going to cost you anywhere between 10 and 20 bucks a year. Um, and then you configure that domain to work with either, you know, Apple Mail or even you can use Google for that as well. Or you can just sign into the web hosting company and get your email that way. So this way you always have your own domain and with your own email address. And uh, the steps to do that are Pretty, not something I can give out on the air, but we can certainly direct you to some places that will walk you through step by step over on the website. That'd be great, yeah. And can I, I have one more quick thing, and it's just advice. When do I decide to buy a new computer? When mine drops dead, or when it's three years old, <laughs> or is there a rule of thumb? Well,. It's when you can no longer stand it. Okay? <laughs> that was it's yesterday. Just so slow. <laughs> All right, Ida, it's your birthday, sweetheart. Just go buy yourself a new oh. computer, or, or you may, you, you know, you may not even need a computer anymore. A lot of people don't. Maybe you just need a tablet with a keyboard. So you're not dealing with Windows updates and all those frustrations. Yeah. So it's it's really. Ha you know, how do you really use it? Do you really need an honest-to-goodness computer? I mean, all you're doing is email, web searching, doing your finances and dealing with photos and videos. And you're not doing a lot of stuff where you need a bona fide keyboard. A tablet may be all that you need. And only you can really determine that. But if you are looking for a new laptop, over at commando.com, we have something called the Laptop Quiz. So if you go to commando.com slash laptop quiz, uh, that's where we walk you through, we ask you a whole bunch of questions. What type of laptop do you want? Uh, how much do you want to spend? What do you need it to do? 
and then we'll direct you to what we think is the most affordable uh, and best laptop in that price range, whichever price range that you select. Okay. Well, I happen to have two iPads. Is there any major drawback in just dedicating myself to iPads and forgetting a laptop? Not at all. No? Not at all. I mean, if you can do it, I think it's great. And if you uh, if you buy one of those laptop covers that is a keyboard, mm-hmm. it makes it a lot easier if you're gonna if you're looking for something like that. Uh, I, I don't I don't see a lot of people unless, like I said, unless you're you know doing a lot of Zoom calls and web conferences and editing and videos and uh, emails and presentations and spreadsheets and you know what I'm saying that that you may still need a laptop. But if you're, like I said, but if your life is fairly easy. And you're not doing a lot of that heavy duty lifting, then just you know, dang, just get a tablet. It's cheaper, you already got it. I do, I do. It's not going to cause you any frustration. Although it is your birthday, yeah. so let me tell you, don't go buy, don't go buy a new tablet today because uh, Apple's going to be announcing some new iPads in just a week or so. So I want to make sure that you don't buy the old shoes because we've got some new shoes coming up. So just hang on to that. And once again, happy birthday, Ida, and thank you for your call. You know, when you start talking about hosting your own email, you're going to pay a monthly amount per address, and that amount varies. So Namecheap is $0.91 cents a month. A Google Workspace is $6 a month. You can spend $15 a month with Great Mail. With Bluehost, it's $2.75. So if you're looking to get into hosting your own email, uh, we have some tips posted over on the website at commando.com. Let's talk about now switch gears to the best browser for your phone. If you haven't already tried it, you know that Mozilla Firefox is terrific. Uh, it's clean, it's smart, it's privacy focused. And adding it to your phone makes sense because then you can sync up your searches, your bookmarks, and more across your desktop over to your phone. But Mozilla has another version of Firefox that doesn't get a lot of attention. It's called Firefox Focus. And so if you're concerned about your online privacy, uh, try this browser on your phone. And when you visit a website, no cookies, no browsing history is going to be saved on your device. And you might find that you browse the web faster, too. Now you can find Firefox Focus in the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Again, it's called Firefox Focus. Hey, if you have random gadgets that you don't use anymore, they're just taking up space. What I want you to do is gather them all up. Now, I bet you don't know that you can get gift cards for not only your old Amazon devices, but Amazon will give you gift gift cards for other makers, smartphones, tablets, streaming players, soundbars, all kinds of stuff that you have laying around. And it's a great way to declutter your life and get some money in the process. Now, to get started on Amazon, I want you to search for trade-in program. And on that page, any devices that you purchased on Amazon will automatically appear. But you can also search for devices that you'd like to trade in that you did not purchase from Amazon. You just answer a few questions, get a quote, and if you agree to the amount, you can print a free shipping label to send it on in. And once Amazon gets your device, wow, these gift cards will automatically appear on your account. How sweet is that? Hey, thanks for listening to Kim Commando today. So reach over and give me a nice five-star review. Yes, thank you. And thanks for listening.